Warning, this video contains themes of real-life accounts of violence, death, and illicit activity. This video is for educational and documentary purposes only. This video is not intending to incite or encourage criminal acts of any kind. This video abides by YouTube's community and advertiser guidelines. Your discretion is advised. Welcome to today's video, where we'll be delving into the world of one of Australia's most notorious serial killers, Peter Dupis. While his name may not be as well known as some of his more infamous counterparts, the crimes he committed were just as heinous and brutal. Dubbed by the media as the pure evil killer, Peter Dupas was responsible for the murders of at least three women in the Melbourne area between the years of 1997 and 1999. His methods were particularly chilling, as he would stalk his victims for days, sometimes even weeks, before attacking them in their very own homes. Despite being a relatively recent addition into Australia's list of most notorious serial killers, Peter Dupas has somewhat flown under the radar in terms of public awareness. But with this trail of destruction spanning multiple years, and his crimes leaving a lasting impact on those who knew his victims, it's time to shine the spotlight on this chilling individual and explore the mind of a man who could commit such heinous acts. So buckle up, because today we're going to be talking about the serial killer nobody talks about, Peter Dupas. Born on August 6th of 1953 in Melbourne, Australia, Dupas' early life was marked by tragedy, as his mother passed away when he was just two years old. He was raised by his father, who was reportedly an abusive alcoholic, and his grandmother, who doted on him and spoiled him with gifts and attention. Growing up, Dupas was described as a quiet and introverted child who had trouble making friends. He struggled in school and dropped out at the age of 15. From there, he drifted from job to job, never staying in one place for very long. It's unclear when he began to exhibit violent tendencies, but it is clear that they were present from a very young age. One incident that stands out in particular happened whenever Peter Dupas was just 18 years old. You see, Peter and his friends decided to go hang out as buds and have a good time. That's whenever they saw another group of young men and they got into an altercation. So what do you think happened? Do you think A, Peter Dupas just threw a punch? Do you think B, Peter Dupas pushed one of the other young men? Do you think C, Peter Dupas walked away? Or do you think D, Peter Dupas stabbed one of the young men with a broken bottle and gave him serious injuries? Well, if you pick that last one, you're correct. Anyways, all of this is a glimpse into the violence that would follow him years later down the road. So yeah, let's just get into the next part of his life. In the years leading up to his first murder in 1997, there were several warning signs that Peter Dupas was a danger to those around him. One of the most concerning was his history of violent behavior towards women. In the early 1990s, Dupas was convicted of and sentenced to a 16 year prison term. While he was incarcerated, he was also charged with the attempted murder of a fellow inmate, whom he had attacked with a razor blade. Despite these violent offenses, Dupas was released on parole in 1995. After his release, Dupas seemed to be trying to turn his life around. He found work as a truck driver and even started attending a church. But those who knew him well saw that he was still struggling with anger and aggression, especially towards women. He was known to make lewd and threatening comments to female co-workers and was accused of assaulting a woman he had picked up while driving his truck. Just months before he would commit his first known murder, Dupas was arrested for the stabbing of another woman, but charges against him were dropped due to lack of evidence. This incident should have been a red flag to authorities, but Dupas was once again allowed to slip through the cracks. Looking back, it's pretty clear to see that there were many warning signs pointing towards the fact that Peter Dupas was a dangerous individual. His history of violence towards women, combined with his aggressive behavior and lack of remorse, should have been enough to raise alarm bells. But tragically, it would take the loss of several innocent lives before Peter Dupas would be brought to justice. It was the year 1997 when Peter Dupas committed his first known murder. It was a crime that would go unsolved for years. The victim was 95-year-old Kathleen Downs, a frail and vulnerable woman who lived alone in her suburban Melbourne home. Dupas had been watching Kathleen for some time, and he knew that she was going to be an easy target. On the day of the murder, Dupas broke into Kathleen's house and attacked her with a knife. He then proceeded to assault her and inflict multiple stab wounds, leaving her to bleed out on her living room floor. 
When her body was discovered, police were initially stumped as there was no signs of forced entry, no fingerprints, and no witnesses. But Dupis had made a crucial mistake as he had left behind a telltale sign of his presence at the crime scene, a single hair that was later identified to belong to him. Years later, when Dupis was finally brought to justice for his crimes, this hair would play a key role in his conviction. As investigators delved deeper into the case, they began to uncover a disturbing pattern. It appeared that Dupis had been stalking Kathleen for weeks, carefully planning his attack, and waiting for the right moment to strike. This was not a crime of passion or impulse, but a cold, calculated act of violence carried out by a man who derived pleasure from the suffering of others. Peter Dupis' second known murder took place just a year after his first, and it was just as brutal and senseless as the first. The victim was 27-year-old Nicole Patterson, a young mother who had recently moved to Melbourne with her husband and children. Dupis had been watching Nicole for some time, following her as she went about her daily routine. On April 19, 1999, he broke into her house while she was home alone with her two-year-old son. He then attacked her with a knife, stabbing her repeatedly before leaving her to die in a pool of blood on her bedroom floor. After killing Nicole, Dupis stole her car and fled the scene, but he wasn't finished yet. Four weeks later, he attacked another woman, stabbing her in the neck and leaving her for dead. Fortunately, she survived the attack and was able to provide police with a description of her attacker. Despite this lead, it would take several more years before Dupis would be linked to the murders of Kathleen Downs and Nicole Patterson. It wasn't until 2004 that he was finally arrested and charged with both crimes, thanks in large part to DNA evidence found at the crime scenes. The senseless and horrific nature of Nicole's murder, along with Dupis' complete lack of empathy or remorse, is a chilling reminder of the dangers that lurk in our society. It's clear that Dupis was a deeply disturbed individual who derived pleasure from the suffering of others. His crimes have left a lasting impact on all those who knew his victims. In the next part of this series, we'll delve deeper into the mind of Peter Dupis and explore the motives behind his heinous acts. Margaret Mayer, 40, was a sex worker working in the Melbourne area who was last seen alive at the Safeway supermarket at 12.20 a.m in Broad Meadows on October 4th of 1997. Her body was discovered under a cardboard box containing computer parts at 1.45 p.m. on the 4th of October of 1997 by a man who made the discovery while he was collecting aluminum beside Clifford Road, Somerton, with his wife and her sister. A black woolen glove was found near Mayer's body, which police later confirmed contained DNA matching that of Dupus. A post-mortem examination revealed that Mayer had suffered a stab wound to her left wrist, bruising to her neck and blunt force trauma with a cinder block to the area of her right eyebrow and lacerations to her right arm. Dupis was already serving a life sentence without parole for the murder of Pattison at the time of his arrest for the murder of Mayer, and during his three-week trial, he infamously claimed, it's a kangaroo court, before being led away by court staff to begin his sentence. Mercina Halvages was a 25-year-old Melbourne woman murdered in an attack on the 1st of November in 1997. While visiting her grandmother's grave in the Greek Orthodox section of Faulkner Cemetery in Faulkner, a northern suburb of Melbourne, the alarm was raised to Halvages' fiancé when she failed to meet with him later that day as the couple had planned. Her body was found four days later. At 4.35 a.m., by her fiancé in an empty plot, three graves from where her grandmother was buried, Dupis' home was near the cemetery, and Halvagy's murder remained unsolved until 1997, when the Victorian state government, together with the police, offered a one million Australian dollars reward for the information leading to an arrest. This reward was the fourth highest in Victoria's history. So just to recap, here are Dubis's crimes that he was charged with right here. And as you can see, he was obviously charged with a lot. A lot of the stuff that he did here and that we went through. And uh, yeah, this whole video is just to remind you guys to stay vigilant. There are people like this that exist to this day. And they are willing to inflict pain on others. So be careful, guys. And if you like true crime, subscribe to the channel. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.